Okay then guys, welcome back and today we've got something a lot more exciting because I've been wanting to do this video for a very, 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 very long time and I finally got round to getting the things I wanted to do for today. So I've always I've always wanted to do oh, slow down. Um I've always wanted to do one of my build videos. Instead of like showing what I've done over over a second of time, I wanna do like a full full scale like you watch me build it. So I think I quite like watching those videos and I thought I give it a go myself and see what you guys think. So this is going to be dividing sections of me um, unboxing a model, painting a model, not building a model, then painting it. If the paint inside, if I can do, because I'm not the best. So um, yeah. So what have we got? Uh, I can grab it. Right. I've already opened the box, and because I didn't realise I was going to do a box in, and. And um, we're going to take a look at it. So in this part of the video, I'm going to see how much interest it gets. We're going to box it first. And then, I want to know you guys, do you guys want to watch me build this? It's not the biggest model in the world, but it's one I've always wanted to for a long time. So I'd say, um, let's get them out. Okay, here's a lovely box. Which is now forever going to go in the recycling bin, never to be seen again. Okay, so what did I get from Forge Online? This is a birthday present from me to me. So, uh, you know, I buy my own birthday presents because, you know, it's easier that way. And I have, and I have brought myself a vulture gunship. So, um, I want this model for a long time and I really always like the look of it. The problem was, um, at the time, Forge all kind of started discontinuing the weapons for the aircraft, because like I think all their weapons for the Air Imperial Navy side of things fit all the Imperial Navy ships, and they decided to discontinue, which kind of really put me off doing this model kit for a very long time. But I've now worked out ways where I can convert them and make them myself to one of spare parts. So we'll get to that when we get to it. So let's open this up. Just gotta smell the resin. Mmm. Fresh resin smell. Okay, so what do you get? It? You get a bag with a bag in it. We get our. Look at the big bag. Look at the little big bag. I can't even fit in the camera, it's that big. I'm gonna keep that bag, I like that bag. I'll give it to my girlfriend as a hand, new handbag. Okay then, so you get your um, standard Valkyrie components. Well, you get three out of the four sprues, which is kind of getting, because I was hoping that I would get the fuselage. Because then I was going to do some really cool fuselage, but unfortunately you don't, you will just have a cockpit spare. Which I'm probably not going to do anything with, because I can't think of anything. But you get a couple of parts spare, which we can work on. Oh, I need to get my camera over. Okay, so... You've got, like, the struts by here now for the rear wings. Um, you've got the boarding ramp, you don't need that for this kit. You've got some of the interior details like this at the back panel. I always seem to forget to stick in my Valkyries and end up using it for other things. Um, you've got like the um, armor plates for the lights and the side mount guns, which I don't think this takes. The multi laser and the last cannon. Um, the little side lights which go on. You've got some of the mounts for the uh, things. For the heavy bolters, which you don't get to use. You've got the multiple rocket pods, which we will be using. So you've got the parts to make them. Uh, two front parts of the cockpit, some radio antennas and sensors. More parts for the um, heavy bolts which you're not going to use. So there's no point in me going over the parts we're not going to use. So literally the only thing you need off this room is the multiple rocket pods, the pieces to make the side struts of the wings, some of the internal components, and maybe this. I don't know. And got my fire. Okay, you will need everything on the wing sprue. And you were just going to need the pilots and the internal details off the last sprue. So you don't need the engines. No, nope. you just basically need all the parts to make all the cockpit details. And the cool thing is, you do get the, the two gunner parts spare, the two gunner torso spare, which I guess you could do something with them in the future. Okay, off the boring plastic, but we don't do that. The goodie bag. The goodie bag. I like the goodie bags. Smell of fresh resin. 
Okay, let's pack this piece first. Because this bag has little pieces, and little pieces in the so. Okay. they've seen for this model I'm not gonna lie it looks very um you can see there looks very dull if you know what I mean like the edges ain't as sharp as what I would hope they would be I might sand them off you can see a little bit dipping effect on the side as well quite a veiny looking bit to that uh, so I take it that's where the heavy bolt sits in there, and that's for the feet. I hope you can fit the the uh, cockpit drivers inside as well. I think that would be pretty cool. So it's not the best cast part, but it doesn't seem to be miscast. I just don't think it's just. I think it's just because it's an old, really old model. I think like it's lost its sharpness, but we'll make it work. Okay then, we get the big mean thruster the back of the engine the engine is actually the most impressive piece of this kit i can see it in the bag right now and it i can't see any faults of it. it looks pretty pristine um and apparently this kit's supposed to be a nightmare to put together i don't see how so we have the nice big thruster with all the rivets and the plate and all i'm looking forward to doing some like heat effects on this i think that looks cool it's quite big it's chunky so that's the thruster so we got one thruster Okay, we might as well do the let's check parts of this as well as we go on. So, we've got a thruster. Okay, so we've got the thruster in the cockpit. Um, if they give you new tail wings as well, I think these are slightly bigger or thinner. Better detail on them though. I guess you could cut these seams out. You could bend these flaps in a different way to make it look like it's flying. That'd be cool. Uh, so that's one of the wings. These are the two side wings. I do like these wings. Lots, lots and lots of little details on them. Lots of rivets. Again, the same. You could probably trim out those seams and bend the wing, bend the uh, the rudders to make this look like it's flying in a different direction. So you get two of them. Uh, more wings. I think these are. Get more of the two wings, I think they are. I don't know where they go. I haven't seen them once on the pet. And we get two of these. These are the additional armor plates which go on the back for these wings to glue on. These go on the tail like that. And I believe that these. Oh, huh, that's a nice clean fit. I suppose for drawing these go on the wings like that. So these hold those wings on. Probably end up pinning them. Um, spacers. Maybe these are weapon racks. Interesting. And the other wing thing. And then we get the heavy boulder. Which is really nice. I like that. I like the little things which they put into their kits. All the cog wheel in there. And it looks like it's rotatable if you don't glue that, uh, don't glue that bolt in. Well, there's some of the fragile resin parts we get. Ah, oh, that's how that works. That's cool. It's very neat. Let's see if I can zoom in on that little tip in over my tripod. As usual. Right. So, I think I'd show you it says space around. It seems like you trim these out by air. You cut the space off and lie it down like that on the underside of the wing to work out the space ins for the weapon mounts. I think that's pretty damn cool, to be honest. I quite like that. I'm going to be doing that on a couple of mine. When I say a couple, I'm planning on getting three of these as well. In the future, I'm hoping to have a, a, wing of, a flight wing of three because I quite like these, the idea of these. So that's cool. I don't really see that much in model kits. Oh, and it tells you. Where do those other wings go? Okay, and then we get to the, the only piece which seems to be freshly moulded. We get 
is. Look at the weight. Look at the weight on it. Oh my god. Okay, can I get this to stay? Stay. <laughs> this is the like engine for the vulture. It's beastly that is. It's like my hand just wraps around it and I got big hands like compared to a space marine like this size on it. Hell of a hell of a chunk of resin. It's amazing that is the detail on that. All the cables. Like, normally I won't paint that, I normally just leave all them black. All, all those cables, like all this stuff by here. I think you've got to paint it, to be honest. Looks amazing, I do. So, yeah, um, you obviously will get a better look at these when I'm building it. And then we get. the two clear canopies, which I cannot paint. And a flying stand. Let me see if that fits. So there's a hell of a chunk of resin to have on a flying stand. Okay, it's not fitting the best. <laughs> Does it go that way instead, or is it just me? Yeah, it goes that way. Apparently. Oops, don't break it. What times have I got to sand this down? Awkward one that is. Yeah, it will sit on there. I mean, that's a hell of a chunk of resin to have on, on just a very thin flying stand like that. I don't know whether to dowel it instead. Do you think I should dowel it? I don't know. I think I should. Don't see how it sits on it when it's fully built. We can stand for that. So I'll put that in the box. All the other bases we've got. Okay then, so that's just a brief bit of um yeah. brief unboxing. So I'm gonna now basically gonna get all the bits together now and start putting it together and cleaning it first, obviously. So uh, thanks for watching guys. Please follow this video series of me building and making a making a mess of this. Hopefully not. Yeah. And uh, see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Okay then guys, uh, welcome back to the second part of Let's Build a Vulture Gunship. Right, so we're going to start. Um, before I clean my resin goodness off, I like to take it off the sprues first. Because I just like to get it. I just find it easier than trying to wash a big lump of cake. Like that's a big lump of cake. I didn't realize how big that was. So the things you're going to want for this is a bone saw, a knife, assortment of files, I've got loads more than this, just like I've got. and I have got some sandpaper somewhere, um, I can't find it though at the moment, but I'll come in handy for later when you're trying to put your parts together. Yeah, but you need a bit of key and if you walk around some awkward little bitty bits okay so start off with this stuff is highly toxic if you're intoxicated blah 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 always cut and sand in a well ventilated area i'm in a shed so we're gonna make a start i like the fun bit to make it's loud I must be the only man alive who will like sit there and just go with his forward stuff go boom. <laughs> so I think we'll start with the engine block first, so that's the hardest one. So the easiest way to remove the forward control gates, I find there's loads of ways you can do it, but this is the way I found easy, is to start furthest away from the model and then yourself closer to it but take your time mechanics kind of, you don't really want to be damaging these parts with the saw so there's one bit removed just gonna keep on okay I might just edge that bit off there and then just slowly 
start cutting away. Probably help if my bleed wasn't blend on this. You guys can see what I'm doing. I have marked like a space on my map where I've got to keep everything in sight. Come on. And this might take a while. I'm not even halfway through it. models to know not to rush them because things do not end well so this is just try and bear with me i would normally just go really hack straight in but last time i did that i um, messed up a few parts without realizing my phone is just sliding down on its tripod which is really starting to bug me stay good flow cheap tripods off amazon learn your lesson so thing you see at the bottom of the screen is the bit, bit clip. Um, I'm trying to stop the camera from sliding down on it. It's the joint's gone on it. That's what it is. Do, 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 do. is so blunt it's actually testing my patience with this right now <laughs> okay so ah, there you go mm. and if all else fails and you can't get through deep enough hacksaws are good just don't use them for going like tight because these things do make quite a bit of burring effect so let's see if I can see that. Oh, that's better. As you see what I mean, it's you'll see what I mean now. Okay. That stuff can kill you. Do not breathe in. If you're gonna scrape it away, just lightly brush it to the side. So, right, so we get the first. Now the next step is is to get the gate off completely by here, which is the hard part. Because I don't really want to damage that, so I want to keep, because you want to keep that flat, because obviously we've got a piece which, this piece glues onto there, and I don't really want to be doing any gap. I want to be doing as little gap down as I can on this. So go back to the, the blunt razor saw, and we're going to try as straight as we can. Always stop to check your cuts as well. Make sure they're always going straight. Because once you mess up, there's no turning back. It doesn't seem to want to go through that way. Turning it and working for it. 
will eventually come off. this but yeah so yeah. finally after having a dead arm we've got him off yeah you should be wearing a mask when you cut in this but as you see We've got a bit of sanding to do by here to get this smooth. So that's where the sandpaper comes in handy because you can just get it and rub it down flat. So as the thing almost degated, these smaller bits are the ones I don't really like. Um, we should a pair of clippers with rounded edge. Don't go all the way up to the gate where the gate meets the model. Just come back a bit from it and just cut it off like so. And then just go closer to it again so you don't snap that bit off. Just take your time. Like so. Like so. Ah, now they're ready to be filed off. So, I haven't got any sandpaper on me, have I? No, I don't know where it is, I've just got to get to it. So... Um, I'm struggling to work out what's flash and what's supposed to be on here. So much, there's quite a bit of flash. Flash is a good thing with forge world. So, you, so one thing you do want to have so just get a flat edge file, start striking down the edges which will be flat and smoothed off. Obviously I'll do that back end when I find my bit of sandpaper. Um, and using your knife just remove any bits of flash you can see on here. That's not flash, that's just a big lump of release agent. A uh, bit of flash in there. <sighs> Can't see too much. Little bit there, which is pretty good for a four drill model. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the first bit uh, D gate dead. Um, I think next we'll do the cockpit. So, same again. Uh, we can use the saw for this one. Um, cut this bit first. So just cut away, we'll cut all the bait off, just cut the block off first. Don't cut into the model, like I just nearly have done. Just try and cut as straight as you can. So Easy with a saw, just cut down the seam of the gate. And 
we'll always check where you're cutting. If you lose track of where the cut is going, turn it over and then start from the other side. And then you should be able to redeem it somehow. So once again, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, try and sand that off. I think. So we could try. Is it worth me trying to be clever now or not? Be clever or not? Because I've really cut into a tad of the model, which I really didn't want to do. Guess I could just shave off a little bit more of the saw. Um, abrasive files are pretty good for getting uh, gate block ends off as well. They just leave a horrible blue, blue mark. On these. Almost there. Well, we're already about 15 minutes in. I was going to set these for half hour, 10 minutes. If I only knew how to do time lapse, that would be great. So, should we be doing set the camera up on the other side and work with that for the next video? So, this has got to fit flush. The bottom piece there. So, so that's the goal. <laughs> I want to make sure it fits flush all the way around. It's a bit slippery to hold that mode, so the release agent. But you just want to make sure it fits. So you've got a bit of gapage there, but you're not really gonna you're not really gonna see that. <laughs> I think the paint will fill that out for me. So yeah, it's a pretty good fit. It's a lot longer than what I thought it would be. I thought this was a pretty small body on this. So let's check. For some flash. Right, um, um, right, before I continue this, I'm just going to take a quick five minute break. I'll see you in a split second. Back, I've managed to find some sandpaper. Let's pop this down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it flat like so. Begin by a circular motion, just. 
rubbing it. It's smooth. Um, smooth. I'm going to move the camera over to the other side because you can see better of us and charge it while I use the camera because the camera seems to kill my battery very quickly. So, um, I might have a bit of gap fed on this because this isn't as flat as I thought it was. And this is really fine grade. Um, this is 400 grade, so it's really fine. Probably the better grades for using. Or four drill models, it does wear up quick, but it's less likely going to take out big chunks of it. Uh, just keep rubbing it in circles until it comes flat. You can apply all these methods to other four drill models, you can. It's, it's pretty much the same principle, there's a lot of more prep work in these than there is with your drill models. It's just the nature of the resin, like, um, if I can see there's nothing here warped, which needs bending, so everything seems to be solid chunks, which is a great thing, because the warping is not one of my most, uh, happiest of things to do on a four-drawed model, I guess. Well, any four-drawed model, the warping is one of the worst things you can do. So, I'm just going to get this right here. A bit of a lump there, which I can't seem to get out. Get it. Flat over it. Flat. Goes flat. It's almost there. Okay, uh, it's almost there. Get, Get it as smooth as baby's bottom. So that's nice and flat now. Nope. We can put that to one side and then we can continue um, the thingy in the uh, gates off. So, and also, it's really good in 8th edition, which is one of the reasons I liked it. It was still good, it was all good in the other ones. And the only downside is you can't make this thing unshootable, um, basically undying. Um, in the previous edition, you could give it like uh, armored cockpit and uh, four plus vulnerable save against all missile based weapons and um, flare trap launchers, um, what are flare trap launchers, five plus cover save, um, five, like a five plus cover save or something against, it is like a five plus cover save or something, I believe it was with the flare trap launchers, which was a better option than jinking it, I guess. It's not as good as the four plus, but he wasn't firing snapshots the next turn. Which I see is a bit of a plus side. And that. There's just a bit of a gap. Hopefully. If I can fill that in pretty quickly, I'm hoping. Problem is, it doesn't have a peg or anything on it. So it's going to be a bit of a awkward one to get the set of, uh, in the right place, I guess first time. Which is a bit of a bugger. So I guess not. It's not perfectly thing, but that's a pretty good fit. Like if anybody's had previous experience with four drills, if something fit perfectly fits the first time, you've got to keep it. <laughs> um okay next we'll do the tail wing. Again, let's cut the gates off. Not trying to damage it. It's the main point. That's quite big. Flash it there. And take your clippers. Any flash. Okay. Just a bit of flash on this. Oh, no, there's a hole. A hole which I have to fill. It was almost perfect. Um, make sure you get the flash off these uh, pegs. So make fitting them a lot easier. But I guess, oh no, I'm going to fill a hole. 
because it won't be seen. Bonus points, bonus points, everything. So far on this model, because it doesn't seem to really have any downside so far. Just want to sand flat. It's still there. Getting the files worn out a bit. It's another piece done. Um, we'll do these two next. So let's just flat it that way. Snapping them apart like that because you might damage the actual model, but they just seem to come apart pretty easy. And then very slowly, just start to cut it in. Watch your eyes as well. <laughs> these off. But I'd say these are really, really great uh, in seven and six. When six dropped, these were everywhere. And the way was was the gut. Well, everyone seemed to run the Gatling puncher cans because you had, I think it was 40 shots from this thing coming out at you. Because I don't think the Gatling punchers were twin linked, even on this, they were twin linked. No, it wasn't even twin linked, I mean, there was a hole. So you had 40 shots, and that was a pretty big hole. You can see by there. That's going to need to fill in. in. So, there's a bit of uh, work to be done there. Um, Portal never comes without this faults. If you've never done one of these before. Fold it up, it's supposed to be flash. Yeah, I imagine that would be flash. Um, these are really popular editions. I don't know how popular they're going to be in 8th because obviously these are very toned down. They're just a Valkyrie with an extra. Gun, gun armament. But there are some pretty cool options now because Hell Strike missiles are no longer one use and they have got better in the new edition. Which I can see them being used on a lot of things. I like a lot, like, I like the thing that a lot of one use weapons are no longer one use. Hell Strike missiles are brilliant. Because you can just keep firing them and they've, they've got pretty good stat line on them. Got it, that's got to be filled in, that's going to take some work. That is. Uh, the only downside I can see to these is um, the fact that the some of the weapons have got really expensive. I mean, but Gatling Punisher cannons are quite expensive now. They're not, I think it was 20 points for the t 20 points each for, for each wing. It wasn't too bad. I mean, you get 20 shots out of them. But they're the only weapons I haven't got because uh, they weren't in stock. So I'm waiting for them to come back into stock. The Gatling Punishers. I will have them. I'm going to have. We're going to try and make every weapon option possible. All these. Um, uh, they clean another hole in the bottom of there. Really disappointing. Um, next, we'll do the two wings. These two bombs. I look where these go as well. These go on the underside. I'll show you now once they're clipped off. Cut through this. And then just start snipping off these. Uh, the other thing I was opening, hoping to get was the, um, it was a choice between this and the milk, the, no, it's not a milk, what was it called? Uh, hmm. no, 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 no. Macarius. Macarius Vanquish, I really like that tank, that's one vehicle I really have to get for my army before, well, if it does get discontinued, I'm going to be a bit upset. 
because I quite like the Atlas as well. I've been trying to get hold of an Atlas for years. <laughs> they have no weapon. The Atlas has a heavy bolt there, so it just looks so cool. So these wings, they kind of slot in there. there. And there, I hope that they should. I'm hoping they just slot in because I don't really want to be doing cutting on these. Mm, that's right. Is it? Yeah, apparently that's right. Why don't they just go on like that? And these are act as like the feet for it to land on. Oh, the feet for it to land on or something. So that's how that goes. Um, and there's a lot of models from Ford I wanted to get which they discontinued. Uh, the uh, Earthshaker gun carriage. It's the gun platform with um, all the. Um, it was a gun platform, but it was like packed up and you had like the tracks to tow it. Really like that. That was a really cool model. That was. I like the Ford to kind of make like f fluffy storytelling looking models over actual models which were good in game like you know, um I think that's Fortal's prime that was back here. These some of lots of interesting little uh, models years and years ago. But it's all about the Horace Heresy now. I think like I think there'll be a time where 40k things will be um, extinct from Ford World. I think like you know, the Horace Heresy is the well it is the biggest seller. I mean, it's that big now. Um, Horace Heresy is not following uh, the eighth edition rule set. They've uh, said that uh, Horace Heresy is going to have its own set of rules because it'll be for the more advanced player. So, and apparently it's going to be a lot more in depth, a lot more in depth game than what it is currently, which is kind of scary because the Horace Heresy is quite a diverse. As what it was a seventh compared to uh, some of the other games out there. Okay, let's try and do this now. I think I'll cut the spacer off first. I don't find where the seam is so I can cut along it and get rid of these things off here. Oh, there's one. Number two. Okay, see number two out. These are the um, racks which the weapons are on, which I've got to find a way of basically um, finding. We have mag putting magnets into them. I think you can get magnets small enough from Can they fit? They might just fit in there if I, if I drill it out deep enough. Well, uh, let's have a look when the time comes. Cut away from yourself and keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up with scarred up fingers like bank card. Now, if I do a basic clean up of like the flash and everything, I well, strip them off, and then when it comes to building, if there's anything in the way, I do more work on it. I just want to get 
things off so I can start sussing out how it goes together and how I'm going to paint it because I like to paint things in sub assemblies because I want to be able to paint every inch of it. I'm hoping I might clip other parts of the cockpit drivers and see how they fit into the model. So I think they're going to take a bit of cutting just to get in. I'm hoping they can just come out as well because I'm hoping I don't have to put them in permanently so I can take them out to paint as well. Um, so the weapon mounts. Uh, best pieces to take apart is the uh, gun, gun mount. Which I'm really looking forward to. I really want to like, dry fit that and see how that turns. And the trick with four drawer models is dry fit it about 12 times and then eventually do it and pray that it is right after the 12 times of dry fitting. Seem a bit awkward to file them. Um, where's my triangular file? Is that gonna fit in that gap? It just about does. So probably this goes in like that quite nicely, and then some way or another that fits into there. And then you can rotate the front of your bolt. I think that's pretty cool. Gives it a proper gunship feel. I think that would have been better as an auto cannon. Because I don't know if nobody's noticed, but on Apache's there, the big auto repeating cannon thing on the front. I think that would have been a better option as to have a um, a uh, auto cannon. That would be pretty cool. Or a multi laser, that would work. I think that should have been a changeable weapon option. Okay, then, guys, that's the first uh, uh, or second episode now of this uh, Let's Build video. Um, first time I've ever done one, so tell me what I can do to make it better. Or I should just give up and not bother. Um, so thanks for watching, if you did watch it all. Um, so that's now all the models that now the gate did. So next we're going to wash them and actually start to put this thing together. So start making it look like a model then. See you all soon, the guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.